Okay, I have to keep breakfast today. I felt like I was drawing closer to God, Jesus. I felt traces of that love with presence. But how can it be real? How can how can it, but it's probably just being produced by my mind. My well, when I think about Jesus, I feel a sense of coolness, peace. I smile when I think about Jesus. Yes, I'm I'm still got this unbelief, but I smile when I think about Jesus. But then I ask him. I I, I took I got, I took one of these pills out today and took it out to the uh, di uh, kitchen and put it down somewhere. And I couldn't find my pill. So I asked the Lord, Lord, if you're coming back to me, or if this is you, your presence, I meant it. I meant it from my heart. Please let me find my pill. You know what? I still have not found that fucking pill. So, if a real if real Jesus answers real prayers, maybe this feelings of peace I'm feeling, of love Jesus come back to me, or counterfeit, or, or, by, or more correctly, not from Jesus. I give up. No, I don't, but... My life got kicked out of the sugar cane pizzeria because I'm not good looking. But I, I was mad at her, had her pe people downtown treating me like I'm cramped because I'm not good looking. If I had Jesus, I could, now I've learned my lesson, I could take it now. I wouldn't let it make me curse the Lord like I used to when I had Jesus. But Jesus... How can I believe he's going to take me back? We won't answer me. A single prayer. A single prayer I prayed. Not one fucking prayer. Why live? Why doesn't he just kill me? If I am saved, why doesn't he kill me before it's too late? That the spirit may be saved, that, that the body, the, the flesh... The body, what, how does it put? That the body, for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. What have I lost here? I'm starting to look good, young, but without Jesus, that provides me some, some happiness and peace, but I miss Jesus. I miss Jesus. I wish I could go back. I wish I had, I had one chance to put it all in Jesus' hands. And when, and when the girls are calling me old, and people were kicking it, me out of the, the places of business because I'm different, not good looking, so they don't put up with my, my strange shenanigans like um, such as messing girls' arms. They say that makes the girls uncomfortable. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not going to quit. I will be damned for no, no, no. I don't want to. Say, I won't say that. I will be shot. I will. I die. I will die. I want no. I won't be damned if I can help it. I will not. That's until until my, I get my arm surgically long, longer. I will not give up measuring arms. If you don't like it, if they, if they don't like it, they can kiss my ass. I'm not gonna quit. Kick me out of all the businesses. Keep me out of every business and kiss. I'm not. I will not. Do you hear me? I will not quit. At least until I get long forearms to my satisfaction. But anyways, every time I've asked you, just gotten asked you just kindly for reassurance that I have not crossed the line and lost my salvation. He never, ever, 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 ever answers. There have, been, I had, there have been times I asked the Lord, if there is no hope, let somebody tell me they're praying for me. And on three occasions, somebody sure enough came up to me and told me they were praying for me. Does God ever answer the prayers of an apostate to let him know that he's 
cross the line is unpardonable. He sure as for me, uh, uh, apparently. Unless something else is going off, something's fucked up. You know what, how about, the, I wish I could be, uh, have Jesus back, that love. Have, 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 I had back. There's, there's, there's some force pulling me away from him. Being able to come back to him. Right now, it's unbelief. I'm having a hard time believing in the sin of Jesus Christ. I constantly tell myself, I uh, work myself up to believe that in the virgin birth, the sinlessness of Christ, because they've proven that Moses and the flood, all the stories in the Bible, were not original, were not real, but they've proven so, so, so many passages in the Old Testament were, were, uh, were originally thing uh, owes to Marta, but the Jews took them and re 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 quoted them to make Yahweh superior to the God that they took stole the original writing from. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Oh, what happened to the good old days when we when it was all simple? The, the earth was, Adam, humanity was 6,000 years old. Not the earth, the humanity. Everything was cut and dry. Everything was black or white. What happened to those days? Jesus, are you even really real? I asked you publicly. Are you even really real? Is something going on that I don't know. Or are you really who, really, really real? All I know is, how can I believe Jesus is going to hear me and take me back and forgive me my sins? But every time I pray and ask for reassurance, he doesn't answer me. God has forsaken me. Jesus has, forsa Jesus has left me. Even when I do become the good-looking guy, rap star, had the longer forearms that I so desperately want. I need the longer forearms and the good looks like Hannah needed a son when she was crying and the priest thought she was drunk. She was trying from such sorrow of heart. Why didn't God love me enough to at least understand? Well, he loved me. I can't, I can't, I had something precious from him. He loved me. I cannot accuse him of not loving me. But couldn't he have loved me a little bit more to let me, I wish he had, maybe he would have let me have had, had I passed the test. But all I know, a real Jesus answers real prayers. And these feelings of peace, I'm feeling, I cannot accept them, I will not, I cannot accept them just coming from Jesus if he doesn't answer a few simple fucking prayers to reassure me that he's still with me. He has not abandoned me. Especially when he's answering prayers to give me signs that he has abandoned me and that I am unpardonable. Something's fucked up, man. And when, yes, I pray this prayers, Lord, if I'm hopeless, let somebody tell me they're praying for me today. I pray them in my mind so the devil can't hear me. So who else, who the fuck, who the fuck else can be asking these prayers? If it's not God, unless the devil can read, read your mind or read your aura. Man, I'm such a fucking loser. And Jesus told me one time I was not getting rid of him. If he let, if if he let, if he has let me get rid of him, and so I, so I, I then I go to hell. Then he lied to me. He told his first lie to me. I I got the dubious honor, quote unquote, of Jesus telling me his first first lie he ever told. When he told me one time I was not getting rid of him. That happened in 2017 after I repented of a particularly blasphemous, nasty episode of lashing out against God because someone somebody said I looked old. And when I repented, and I really meant to, I'm, I really wanted, I really, really meant it. I, I, as I felt the new birth come back, I felt their wellness.
awareness, the awareness of the new birth coming back. It's not that the new birth had left, it's the aware, the awareness. Not even the awareness, but that some fresh, that some came back. I felt the lone thought, you're not getting rid of me. To be honest, Jesus, why couldn't you let, why can't you let me have a, a small season being the good looking guy, looking young, having the long forms? I really need this. And then strike me down and give me back everything I had, everything, especially your love, especially the love. Not one molecule less of your love than I had. That's the most important thing. You said everything I had was the atonement. And make me a paraplegic for the rest of my life. But the only thing I am able to do is communicate the truths, the Bible wisdom you blessed me with, with over the years. And write things to glorify you. And give testimony to glorify you. Why can you do that for me like you did? Like you love King David and King Solomon and let them break your rule in Deuteronomy 70, 70 that says the king shall not multiply to himself wives, yet you, you bless them with multiple multiple wives against your own command. Why can't you, why can't you do the same? Why can't you? Forget it. I guess it, it's my fault. I wish I could go back in time for, to before I announced Jesus Christ that fatal time, and not, not renounce him. And I would pass the test after this, after that. But Jesus has given up on me. Jesus has forsaken me. I guess I'm just going to go to hell. I don't want to. But right now. Biggest problem with me is this fucking unbelief. Having a hard time believing intellectually in the truth of the gospel, claims of the gospel, because some contradictions. Going to apologists trying to bolster my faith, but the question still remain: Jesus, are you even capable of satisfying the answer? Give satisfying my questions. Are you even capable of do that? Doing that. Or you, or, or you demand a type of faith in the face of these contradictions. And all the other Christians who wanted nothing, who wanted to serve you better than I did, they, they didn't have hang-ups like I did with my good looks, what my desire, selfish desires. They didn't have those hang-ups. They just wanted to serve you. And yet you let them fall in the intellectual unbelief and deconvert. Jesus, are you even real? Where are you? Why do you let some of your children deconvert and fall away from you? Are you not a jealous God? Not willing that one should perish? Forget it. All I know is today I, I pray ask Jesus Someone, all I need to do is find that fucking pill, and that would help me be reassured that Jesus had once come back to me, that these feelings of peace were of the Lord, not just of my own heart. God doesn't give up on you. He gave up. He's given up on me. So, David, I love you, brother, but I think you're telling a lie. God has given up on me. And in another sermon of your Jesus shuts the door, you talk about God giving up. You said Jesus shuts the door on some of his children when they turn back into sin. So which is which is it, David Wilkerson? God will not give up on you, or will God give up on you? I'm getting mixed messages from you, David Wilkerson. Let me show you one. Like, I know if 
evangelist. I know a pastor from all over the world. Thinking of one right now, saved from drugs years ago, became a mighty evangelist, preached to some of the largest Sunday God churches in the world. Used to preach at, uh, we, he, he came in years ago to preach at uh, Teen Challenge. But some of the drug addicts heard him preach and said, Brother Dave, he may be preaching the largest church in America, but he's a phony. Because drug addicts can smell a phony in the pulpit quicker than anybody. Former drug addicts and alcoholics. And I, 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 I didn't know what it was, but we found out later that he was still using drugs. He wound up in the streets of San Francisco. And a friend of mine saw him one day. His name was Bobby. He said, are you ever going to come back? He kept, he, he would cry and he said, you don't know how bad I want back. You know how many tears I've shed, a river of tears to get back. I want to get back so bad. But there's no place on this earth I can feel his presence anymore. God give up on him too. Listen. Can't sense his presence. I've cried, I've wept. There's an Old Testament story about that. Remember? The curse he sought song. repentance with tears. Esau never did get it. Crossed the line. He had drawn. Listen to me, please. If you don't believe this, go out and ask some of these evangelist friends of mine. Listen. How many times I've wept with them and cried and said, Lord, why? Why can't he? Listen to me, seeking, he's crying, he's pleading. Why can't he break through? God, God gave up on them. God gave up on me. So what gives you the God to say God will not give up on you, David? Which is it, David? Is it black or is it white? It can't be both black and white. Maybe it's, maybe if it's gray. Listen to this. There's an Old Testament And a friend of mine saw him one day when he go to preach it. A teen challenge doesn't change his character it isn't your sin this is what I don't understand and God says that's it shuts the door but the door of his presence is your heart in compromise and here's what it is you all the line I'm gonna close with listen, just this listen. I told you before God doesn't draw the line we draw the line and here's what it is. You have confirmed yourself in compromise. You have, you, 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 God sees your heart. That sounds like me. I, I kept on in my blasphemies against him because I, he would not make me a good looking guy. And he knows that if he doesn't shut the door, of, oh, we're talking about the door of his presence now. The door of the, the, his presence. Or the door of salvation. That This is what confuses me. Keep that in mind. The door of his presence. He shuts the door. Access to his presence. Because he knows. That if you go on any further. Any further. It's only going to confirm you worse. In your sins. And God says that's it. Doesn't end his mercy. Doesn't end his grace. To the world. <laughs> What do you mean? Doesn't is the disgrace of the world. What about the person he shut the door on? Doesn't change his character, but as far as you're concerned, the Lord says, I can't let you play this game anymore. Lest you destroy not only yourself, but all those about you. Lest you, just, lest you destroy not only yourself. If Jesus shuts the door on you and takes away your salvation, you've already destroyed yourself. So what are you saying, David? What are you saying? That the person... Who Jesus shuts the door of his presence on is still saved? Please, is he saved or lost? And Answer I, me, David. I'm going to close with this, but I know tonight, I know of evangelists, I know of pastors from all over the world thinking of one right now. Okay. Another question I have to ask that's making me doubt Adam, the first if Jesus is really real. Okay, let me, let me put my video. There are people.
who prayed for the salvation of a loved one, and they and the Lord finally saved them. They they believe it with all their heart. They believed in. They prayed for healing and or the salvation of a loved one, which is more important than healing. They kept on praying. They believed and they had faith. Jesus said, "If you have the faith, if you have faith." Of the grain of mustard seed, you shall say that this mountain be uh, by our casting the seed, and it should be obey you. It should obey you. So this should be true for all Christians. But then why do some Christians pray for the salvation of a loved one, and the person gets saved? In other words, that in other words, pray totally believing, knowing God has got an answer to the prayers for the salvation of a loved one, and the loved one never gets saved. Why can't God answer all prayers of, of faith of his believers? If he's really real, he should. Why doesn't he? If he's really real, that makes me doubt. Jesus said, Jesus condemned his disciples for not getting their prayers answered because of their unbelief. What about people who pray truly believing? Truly believing with all their heart that God's gonna answer and God never come through. God, are you are you even real? Are you real? Or have you been sold a bill of goods? Are you? I humbly ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, are you really real and why? Especially when somebody praying for the salvation of a lost loved one. Some some prayers. Why don't you answer every question who prays for the salvation of a lost loved one? And this, and and you are a minister of God, preaching two totally contradictory things in two different sermons. It makes me wonder if Jesus is real, if his preachers preach one thing and preach something totally antithetical to what they preached. Jesus would not give up on you and, and one servant and another servant. Jesus will shut the door on you and you won't be able to get back. The curse of Esau. Esau sought repentance but never could get with tears. But then again, they're wrong about Esau. They, they, a lot of preachers give the impression that Esau spent his entire life begging for forgiveness for having sold his birthright. That there are times in Esau's lives that he cried, begging forgiveness, and God would not forgive him. That's not what that verse means. He sought repentance carefully with tears, but could not get it. He doesn't seek repentance for himself. He seek repentance means to change his mind. He sought repentance in his father's mind. And when did he do this? When uh, he came back and realized Jacob had stolen his blessing, and he's like, "Please, father." Have you not a blessing for me? That's what that's what what meant. He uh, saw repentance with tears carefully, but could not find him. Isaac had already blessed Jacob, and he could not uh, undo the blessing he had already given Jacob. That's what it means, you dumbass. You need to y'all preachers. You need to be more careful when you study the Bible and be more thorough on your research because you. Y'all are passing a lot of lies. If it's not true, it's a lie. A lie is a lie is a lie. Is if it's not true, if it's not if, if it's not white, it's black. A year or so ago, if, how can the Holy Ghost be giving you these messages to get to us if they're contradicting one another? A lie is a lie is a lie. And no lie is of the truth. <laughs> 